Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day five puzzle using Ivy. I have the sample and input loaded. And in this puzzle, we have a list of lines on a grid and we wanna find the number of grid points where any two horizontal or vertical lines overlap. Our strategy is going to be to enumerate all the points covered by all the lines, sort them, and then count the points that are listed more than once. The most convenient way to represent an XY point turns out to be encoded in a single larger number so that it's a scalar in Ivy. We'll use base 10,000. And then the encoding of x and y is going to be x times the base plus y. So 3.4 is 30,004. Now, one nice thing about this definition is that all the usual scalar versus vector promotions work. So we can apply 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. And I don't really want to decode those in my head. So let's write a function to print them nicely. First, we'll make a function to print a single pair. And then we can say to print p, we take p div n and combine it with p mod n. And then we say print 3.4. That works great. But it doesn't work for lists. If we say 4, 5, 6, it gets mad. So we can fix that. We can change row to give us a 1 by 2. And then we can change print to use an inner product of these two uh, lists. So if it gets a list, it's going to get all the, the first coordinates, all the second coordinates, pair them up, combine them with row, and then use comma to concatenate them. So now if we print 3.456, we get the right answer. Now, we're, we might have a lot of these, so it's probably easier to print them sideways. There we go, 3, 4, 3, 5, and 3, 6. Um, so now we know how to represent a point, and we can print it. So let's work on enumerating all the points covered by the lines. Now suppose we have the line in the example from 1, 1 to 1, 3. We need some way to count the numbers from 1 up to 3. And then on the next example, from 9, 7 to 7, 7, we need some way to count down from 9 to 7. So let's write that operator. We'll say x to y is going to be the list of numbers from x to y. If x is less than y, then we'll start at x and we'll add iota 1 plus y minus x. But since iota starts at 1, that's going to be 1 off. So we'll put a minus 1 in there. And otherwise, if x is bigger than y, it's basically the same thing, but counting down and subtracting. Um, there we go. So now 1 to 3, 9 to 7, all works. So now we can print 1.1 1 .1 to 3. There we go. All right, so now we can write the expansion of a single line, all the points in a single line. So the first thing we need to do is only cover the horizontal and vertical lines, which we can do by testing whether the xy coordinates of the first pair are equal to the xy coordinates of the second pair. That will give us two Booleans, and then we'll or them together. So as long as one of the coordinates is uh, the x's or the y's are the same, we'll continue. And we'll say 1 to 3, point 2 to 4. One of those will be a singleton, and one of those will be a range. And they'll put, put together the right way. And otherwise, if it's not a horizontal or vertical line, we'll just make an empty list. So we can expand 1, 1, 1, 1, 3. Oops, print, expand 1. There we go. Print, expand 1, 9, 7, 7, 7. That looks good. So now we have a single line and we need to collect them into all the outputs for all the lines. So given the full list of lines, whoops, given the, there we go. Given the full list of lines, um, if it's empty, then we're gonna want an empty list. And otherwise, we'll expand the first one and we'll concatenate that with the result of expanding the rest. So it's just a simple recursive loop over the list. And so we can now print expand sample. And there we have it. Now notice uh, there's two zero nines. There's one there, and there's one there. And to identify that there are two of those, we can start by sorting the list. Ivy provides the up operator to print the indexes of an increasing values of a vector. So if we have 10, 20, 10, 40, 20, 30, 50, up of x is 1, 3, 4, 2, 5, because the right way to sort x is to take 1, 3, 4, 2, 5. So x of up x is the sorted vector, so let's put that together. 
and now we can print, well, let's see if that works. Now we can print the sorted expanded points. And now the zeros and nines are, or the zero nine points are, this, are next to each other. So now we just have to find them. Uh, remembering back to day one, we can look for points that match the ones next to them by comparing a list X against the list rotated one position. So let's take that and then say X equals one rotated X. And that is the points where X matches the next thing in the list. But if there were three in a row, we wouldn't want to count two of them, two out of the three as duplicates, only one of them. So we want the X's that are the same as the one after that, but different from the one before. And so we'll say X equals one note and not X equals uh, minus one rotate. And that turns out to be the same here. Um, so finally we can add those up. So now we can say there are five duplicates in X. And so putting that all together, we can say duplicates of sort of expand of X. And how many overlaps are there in the sample? Five. How many overlaps are there in the input? 3,990. All right, that's the answer. Let's go to part two. All right, part two says to handle diagonal lines like one, one to three, three and nine, seven to seven, nine. Turns out that um, it's actually easier than what we did because when we expanded one, we had this filter to get rid of the non-horizontals, but diagonals, no problem at all, that'll just work. So expand one, 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 three, three, print expand one. That works well. And then nine, seven, seven, nine also works. And so having redefined expand one, we should be able to just run the overlap again and we get 12 points, which is what we should have. And then we'll say 21, 305. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.